we finish to highlight just a few of the research projects that are being run around the various Australian university centres which show you the breadth and the depth of some of the work that's being done in this country. They cover the mechanisms of cell damage and how to stop the cells being damaged at a level of the cell itself new ways to protect the cells if they are being damaged, what are the genetics behind the problems that people with glaucoma might be experiencing, what is the value of life, lifestyle changes such as exercise, and how can the study of blood vessels, which are so important in nourishing the nerves, how can the study of the blood vessels help? So let's just take a snapshot of a few centres. This is Bill Morgan again from Perth, and he has looked at a variety of models showing that the damage occurs in glaucoma at the back of the eye. This is the nerve cells at the back of the eye cascading out of the eye, like that waterfall that I showed you the pictures of from the front. And as the nerve cells go out, you can see by these colours that various chemicals in the cells that they require to move from one part of the cell to another in order to show they are working normally and are healthy get blocked and clogged at the exit point of the eye. This is the point of damage that glaucoma causes and that's how it causes damage to the vision. In Adelaide, Bob Casson and his team at the University of Adelaide are looking at red and near infrared irradiation treatment because it's been shown fascinatingly to change the energy efficiency of cells, to increase the energy production from cells and reduce some of the side products of cell metabolism, cell existence. And the number of cells here shows that cells can be saved when they are insulted if they are at the same time as the insult is applied also irradiated with near infrared radiation. And this has been shown by a number of researchers around the world and Bob and his team are looking at a trial of novel laser therapy as an adjunctive treatment for glaucoma, not instead of lowering pressure but in addition to, to uh, lowering pressure. Jamie Craig at Flinders University, also in Adelaide, and David Mackey, both from Perth and Tasmania, have led Australian research in the field of genetics, trying to identify the underlying genetic defects that lead an eye to develop one of the glaucomas, and on the basis of understanding what's happening at the cellular level, to develop treatment strategies that address the underlying cause. Also using genetics to determine how a person is going to respond to certain drugs because pharmacogenetics allows so-called personalized medicine. If we have a genetic profile which translates into understanding how we will respond to particular medications, we can sidestep many, many of the side effects that might occur to some people and, and only target people with particular drugs that we know are going to respond to them. Jamie has developed the Australian and New Zealand Registry of Advanced Glaucoma Patients where they're identifying patients early because of their genetic profiles and identifying those who are at greater risk of developing glaucoma at a later stage in their lives. This is a very exciting field. Jonathan Croceland at the University of Melbourne has, amongst many other projects, been looking at the benefits of exercise working on the basis of studies, results that come, this is a study of 30,000 male runners followed for nearly eight years in the United States, and they looked at the prevalence of self-reported doctor-diagnosed glaucoma in runners, and the glaucoma risk decreased by nearly 40% as people perform better in a 10 kilometer race. When we have mice exercised and the video will show you mice being exercised by forcing them to swim in a bucket for 60 minutes per day for five days a week measuring the electrical impulses from the cells at the back of the eye which are damaged by glaucoma the cell elect electrical activity can be improved significantly 
by exercise at that level for mice. And that together with the results from the large scale male running study seems to suggest that exercise is a very valuable addition to treatment. Whether you have to run 10 kilometer races in rapid time in order to get the benefit still needs to be proven. But it does appear even in humans that when you exercise you have an improvement in electrical activity, that's the mice, and this is a young volunteer with skin electrodes and electrodes called DTL electrodes also looking at the benefits and effects of exercise and you can see how the electrical activity in human cells improves with exercise. Stuart Graham at Macquarie University in Sydney has been looking at the response of the blood vessels in the back of the eye, the retinal vessels, and analyzing dynamically how those cells pulsate, how the, those vessels pulsate to see whether or not that can give a clue as to the kind of glaucoma and the mechanism of damage that a, that a person is suffering. And this is clinical work that is ongoing. There is much promise in these projects and many other projects. There is much to anticipate as we head towards Glaucoma Australia's target, which is to eliminate glaucoma blindness. Mm -hmm.